Hello and welcome everybody, this is Old Man Pool. Dominaria is released in Magic Arena, so I'm excited to be trying that out today. Uh, they have a new format called Quick Constructed, which looks super, super sweet. It's basically just running a constructed deck through a series of matches, but you get to play till you get to seven wins or three losses, sort of similar to Hearthstone's old uh, draft strategies. We also have one other sort of exciting thing. We have Quick Draft, which is being announced in, I guess, what is that? like seven and a half days ish so uh, about a week for the the quick drafts to come around and i'll be able to draft here on dominaria or here in magic arena with dominaria as well so excited for that uh before we jump in i want to say thanks to everyone you guys have been fantastic ever since the new sets come out there's been a lot of support a lot of new faces of the channel i'm really really appreciating all of you that comment on the videos and give feedback for me. It helps me improve as a player. Hopefully I can give you guys some reasonable responses as well. Uh, if you enjoy watching drafts or the arena content, definitely subscribe. Um, join the community in the comments. I do put out content a couple times a week and I would love to have you guys. So now that I've got my, uh, my advertisement out of the way, let's jump in. I think we've got some packs. Yeah, okay, so we got a handful of free Dominaria packs just with the release. I've also saved up for another four more, so let's jump those out. Um, also in this new new update, you have the opportunity to purchase gems. We're not going to do that today, but there is actually a, a real world like money exchange thing going on now. For now, let's try and keep things free to play though, and let's open some Dominaria. Kind of interesting, you can get... Huh, they've got some extra like big pack bundles, but it says the packs always contain at least wild cards. Okay. Interesting. Well, let's just start out with just regular packs here. And I guess we'll open all the unexciting ones first before we get into the, the main event with Dominaria. I'm never going to get tired of this opening animation. Ooh, Twilight Prophet's pretty sweet. Honestly, from these packs, we're hoping to get wild cards. I kind of burned <laughs> all of my wild cards in my last couple of constructed forays, but we want to get some good ones so we can build a, a sweet Dominaria deck here. But that was a good pack for sure. And eh, not super exciting, but that's all right. I am a sucker for the uh, green black explorer deck, which I've played, I'm pretty sure, for you guys a couple of times. Maybe just once. Ooh, rare and common wild cards. Happy for that. Uh, we're also 50% of the way towards the vault, so it's possible we'll be able to open that by maybe the end of this series, but maybe not quite yet. Yeah, Hour of Devastation's next up. Yeah, not too much there. Mom and Cat. I like me a Channeler Initiate, certainly. Digma Drake's kind of sweet. All right, now our main event. I'm excited. What are we hoping to open? Ooh, our animation froze. I don't know what happened there. Hopefully that's not a common thing. Ooh, Torgar's pretty sweet. Uh, probably not fantastic and constructive, but I mean, maybe if we end up with like a sweet sapling deck, we'd do something with that. Like Vicious Offering, like Memorial of Folly, there's stuff here. Alright, let's try the next one. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I lagged real bad that one time. Ooh, Ariel is a sweet card for sure. If we end up in sort of like black-white deck, this does a good job. I guess it doesn't fit super well with like the Vampires from Ixalan, but it's probably strong enough just as inclusion on its own. And always happy to see those uh, wild cards coming around, too. Sean is cool. Yawgmoth's sweet. Alright, alright. Mending of Dominaria. So this card has actually really, really impressed me in the pre-release. I don't know if it's... It's pretty slow, probably pretty dirtily when it comes to Constructed. But, I mean, being able to bring back two powerful creatures, it's good value. And, I mean, either those creatures have died or we can just hit them off the top of the deck. I, I like this card. Uh, cast down is great. Wanted to keep, pick up a couple of those for sure. Ooh, Slimefoot's cool. And Elstry Bowern's cool. There's Ruinous Blast. Not super exciting, but that's alright. Okay, wild card. Never unhappy with that. And our last pack here Hazardous Bombardment and Triumph of Gerard. Okay, so I don't think we got anything that just knocks it out of the park. Let's see. I really have no idea what kind of deck we want to try and build here. 
So I've looked over our new Dominaria cards. I think of the cards that we got, the one I'm most excited about by a decent margin is this Ariel Knight of Windgrace. She seems super, super good. She does die to removal, but she's a 4-4 Vigilance, which means she's going to be able to dodge a lot of the like, red and a lot of the cheap removal in the format. And if she survives, it's just absurd. You start making knights all over the place. You can tap a bunch of knights and destroy a, a creatures. I know that a lot of the uh, vampires actually from Ixalan Rivals of Ixalan are knights. There's a decent number of soldiers mixed in there too, but I'm thinking we might be able to put together sort of a, a sweet like knight deck and then just with a bunch of value cards like Profane Procession. I think we can actually get there. So it'll be not like a completely new Dominaria deck, but kind of a hybrid like uh, white black knight slash vampires. And I'm excited for that. That seems sweet. So let's go back all the way to the beginning here, start with white, and just look through and see what we're excited about. So like Dauntless Bodyguard I could see playing, uh, we've got four uncommons to work with, and I think if we're going to be grabbing knights, our best ones are the, uh, what are they called? Let's find them. Going too far. Nope. There we go, Knight of Grace, I think it's Knight of Malice is the other side. These cards seem very, very good if you're in true, like, white-black knights. So I think I might just pick up, like, two of each of those. I don't think there's going to be any cards we want more than those. So let's grab some Knights of Grace. Oh, and that's true. If you guys are kind of, like, don't really want to watch you throw the whole deck together, I know some people appreciate that. Some people just want to see the games. I'll definitely have a timestamp below, and that will lead you to the first match if you guys just want to join me there. You can see the deck in action. All right, so not a bad start there. And I don't think there was anything in those first like handful of packs we were all excited about. We can play Banalish Honor Guard. Maybe we'll put that in and hope to cut it. I think it's kind of low impact. Could play like a Dante Vanguard just for the vampires and like the general power of the card. But I kind of want to make this Knights thing work if we can. We'll see, we may end up having to pull in a couple of like reasonable vampire cards just into the mix towards the end. Banalish Marshal would be sweet, although I think we're going to be using our rares for like maybe more Aureoles or something like that. Ooh, History of Banalia. Yeah, this card is legit. And if we're doing the Night Deck, I feel like we got to get History. So we got one Mythic Rare, let's make one History of Banalia. So obviously this deck is going to be a long ways away from being like perfect on any level. Radiant Destiny seems good anytime we're... Well, I guess the Vigilance is a little bit of an overkill since most of the Knights have it already. Eh, I guess maybe not all of them, like Knight of Grace doesn't. All the tokens do. But anyway, uh, this deck's definitely not going to be like perfectly tuned for the format or anything like that, but it's exciting to play with the new cards and so I kind of wanted to show that off. Call of the Cavalry seems good. Uh, probably just want like four of those, right? They're commons too, so I'm not super un unhappy if we end up like cutting a couple of these. Since common wild cards are fairly easy to come by. It's the higher rarity ones you want to be a little bit more, a little bit more sparing with. Uh, Ixalan's Binding might make the cut. Where was Cast Out? Probably around here too, yeah. Cast Out might as well. Uh, Bishop of Binding's pretty powerful just on its surface, so that might be good enough as well. Mm, Angel of Sanctions, also just a consideration because of how powerful the card is. Yeah, nothing too exciting here. Yeah. Okay, looks like that's it for white. Let's see what black has to offer us. Skullduggery, I'm never unhappy to play like one Skullduggery. Could maybe get there for that. Definitely want to cast down. Dusk Legion Zealot, nah, we're doing the Knights theme for as long as we can at least. Uh, moment of Craving, I guess there's the better Moment of Craving now. Vicious Offering, let's play that. Walk the Plank is good. It's a little bit scary, actually, on in Magic Arena, because there are a good number of Merfolk decks running around. And since there's no, like, sideboard option, that card can just be terrible. But I suppose we'll, we'll deal with it if we have to. Uh, nothing here, really. Nothing here. Nothing here, I don't think. I have tried sorting by set. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. It's near as I can tell, um, at least yet, on Magic Arena. It's probably a feature that'll get added at some point. They'll add like a keyword for all of these for the set. 
but not quite yet. So I'm just adding in some like general power cards here. Not necessary, not necessarily that we play them all, but we can kind of cut down from this. Chip Cobra's good. Sanctum Seeker's pretty sweet. We're not like we're definitely more knights than vampires, but I think Sanctum Seeker will still pull its own. Maybe not. Although I guess most of the the vampire knights are a little bit higher on the like higher in the curve, so maybe we'll still see them to come. Champion at dusk doesn't seem very good. Just don't have a ton of vampires. If I can play both Liliana just for the raw power level of the card. Elish Reborn? Is this card good? Probably not. I, I really like this card in draft. I think it's one of my pet cards, but it's probably just not quite good enough for like a constructed format. Tetsumok, on the other hand, always gonna play one of those in pretty much any black deck we get to. Okay, it looks like that's kind of ooh, Legion's Lieutenant will probably play. Hmm. How many vampires do we end up playing? Not too many, right? Yeah, there's just not all that many vampires. So maybe Legion's Lieutenant is just not something we're real excited about. Uh, Profane Procession, definitely. Bona, definitely. Call the Feast, I guess, is good if we're on a little bit more on the vampire side. But we're probably going to end up cutting these Legion Lieutenants. We'll leave them in for now, but... Nothing here. These are just all weird colored cards for us. I actually haven't seen that card. Visitor Bolas. Oh, it must be from the dual decks. Okay. All right, we also have Memorial to Folly, which is pretty good. This is just, I think, a good value card. And we've got a good set of If Near Deadlands that we picked up earlier for our green-black explore deck as well. Okay, cool. I think this is where we're sitting for now. We're at 37 playables just as is. We Oh, that's true. We need to add in rares, though. So I think I want another Ariel, definitely. We have one more we can get. Uh, having three of her gets a little bit awkward if we draw in multiples. There's a Josu Vest, though. Maybe that card's cool. That's a nice, like, we just win the game trump card at some points. And it's a 4-5 for four, 4. That can't be bad. I guess we're kind of high on the 4-drop slot. Probably won't end up playing all the Call of the Cavalry. Hmm. Three drops. Yeah, our three drops look terrible. Let's look at threes. No Josu Vest. So Banalish Marshall would be great if we had the rares for it. But doesn't look like we're going to. For the Legion, I guess, is probably okay. It's only a 2-2 on its own, but it does go and search for some of our more powerful cards. Like it could grab Bona, it could grab Twilight Prophet, which seems pretty sweet. That's probably okay. History of Banalia is definitely gonna be like our favorite turn three play by a mile. Maybe Marvin Fane. I have a ton of vampires. Have to excuse the crazy shenanigans of someone on a motorcycle outside. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. Yeah, actually I think our, our biggest problem is I've not seen really any threes I'm excited about in this deck. So let's see, what are, we, what are we looking at right now? As it is right now, we've got two Forerunners, a History of the Penalia, two Radiant Destiny, Really would like like at least two more creatures. Oh, we can cut Banalish Honor Guard. Well, if we're playing, I guess we're probably just going to play Legion Lieutenant. And have to accept the fact that it's a sort of black-white vampire zombie deck. So I guess if we're doing that, Mar Marvin Fane gets a little bit better. It's a little bit awkward that we're kind of splitting between two tribals, even though there is some overlap. Hopefully that doesn't burn us too much. So let's look at Knight here. Banalish Marsh will probably be the best card, although that's going to be kind of hard to play on turn 3 too, given what the mana base is going to have to end up looking like. Alright, so we've got Knight, and then let's do Vampire. Aspiring Cleric's fine. We could play the Legion Conquistor just for value, or Queen's Commission just for tokens. They don't work great with Mavern Fane. They are quite good with Legion Lieutenant. Pretty good with Radiant Destiny. Spartan Cleric's realistically our other choice, right? Or Sadistic Sky Marcher. Do we have enough vampires to make this card good? Ah, uh, yeah, I think we might. I think with where we're getting to now. If we have to play it on four, it's not the end of the world. Although I guess if we're trying to fill out our three drop slot, that's a little bit awkward. Most of our vampires are higher up in the curve, though. 
All right, what seems bad? Skullduggery is questionable. Don't think we need Banalish Honor Guard. We've got six two drops as is that I'm more excited about. Vicious Offerings, cool. Yeah, Rebrand, which seems just okay. Probably cut some four drops. So we want Ariel, we want Bishop of Binding. Bone Picker's probably just okay. Chupacabra is good. Sanctum Seeker? Eh, I guess we're a little bit more vampires. Call the Cavalry. We're not going to play Impale, probably. Maybe only one Ixalan's Binding. Maybe cut some Call the Cavalry. Like one of those. One Ixalan's Binding. Bone Picker. Impale? Now we're down to 38 in the main deck. Still kind of high on the 4 drop slot, though. On our fours, we've got Bishop of Binding. I think it's probably just good enough on its own. Call the Cavalry, cast out all those. Josie Vest, I don't really want to cut. Maybe Sanctum Seeker. Twilight Prophet's probably better, right? Even though it's not a knight. This is a must answer threat, which is pretty sweet. Maybe we shouldn't have gotten another Ariel. She's just so much fun for the deck, though. Yeah, I think we're going to be cutting it's got to be at the four drop slot, though. Don't have tons and tons of removal. Cast down, I guess, is solid. Yeah, maybe Eviscerate Bites the Dust. It's only okay. Probably worse. That's true. We just should play Excellence Binding over it if we've got it. Choop still seems powerful. How many vampires do we actually have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a handful. Sanctum Seeker is not terrible rate, it's just a 3-4. It's no Josu Vess, but... Yeah, maybe Sanctum Seeker bites the dust. Okay, we're down to 36 now. I think that's probably good enough. I'll stop talking your guys' ears off about the deck. Let's look at some lands. Uh, maybe. Oh, no, three drop lands. <laughs> Makes sense. I uh, don't need Arch. Um, those are the true, probably not bad. Fat Dunes is definitely getting played. And Memorial Folly, if you're Deadlands, all three, Dutch of the Glorified. And then there's that one, yeah, Forsaken Sanctuary. Don't have Isolated Chapel or the Rares to get more. I think that's kind of it, though. Unclaimed Territory, maybe? I guess it's helpful. It's a little bit awkward since it doesn't hit all of our cards in our deck. Yeah, maybe. Unclean Territory is just worse than like another land. So yeah, this deck might get quite a bit better if we can smooth it out just a little bit, but that's alright. We are going to play all our Forsaken Sanctuaries. Maybe only one each of Shafet, Dunes, and Desert of the Glorified. I like having these as options to cycle, but oops. Actually, sorry, we want more Shafet Dunes. Lose one Desert of the True. Uh, the deserts that intertapped are a little bit of a downside. I think Memorial of Folly and like for Sanction Sanctuary are just better. Uh, what's our white versus black looking like? Pretty even? Oh wow, actually like dead on even? It's kind of funny. Uh, do we have more black symbols? I guess if we're skewing one way or the other, probably Tetsamok is the card we want to skew towards. So let's add in, I guess, seven swamps and six or six plains. All right, we got a black or white black knights. We'll say vampires <laughs> deck. Sweet. Let's run into that. Uh, what's that league called? Quick constructed. Quick constructed. So we got to get to at least four wins, I believe. So we have to go. Four wins before we take our third loss to break even. It's a 500 gold buy-in into this little series. If we get to three and three, that's not the worst. We end up spending 100 gold for three cards, which are at least three uncommons, quote unquote. So seems reasonable. Let's jump right in. Look at this. We got fancy new artwork. Ooh, we've got fancy new player icons. Uh, so. <laughs> In between when we last spoke like five seconds ago, because it'll be nicely edited, of course, I realized that I was actually running with my uh, Magic Online overlay, so you guys have to forgive me about that. The top and the bottom were chopped off. I have changed that now. Hopefully it looks nice and pretty for the games, assuming that we actually get into a game here. OK, 
Okay, well, that sucks. I waited a long time and eventually said abandoned match. We've been given one loss, I guess, for that. Uh... <laughs> well... I guess let's try again. Hopefully there's actually a connection. I haven't played any of these yet, so it's possible that it's, like, bugged. Um... Oh, there we go. Ooh, new animations all around. Okay, so we're just playing on hard mode now. That's okay, that's okay. I guess we're gonna keep this. Seems all right. A little bit slow, but definitely not bad. Let's start with the Memorial to Folly. Look at this, new card and everything. Ugh, I'm grumpy about that match loss, but I guess I'll just have to remember not to say abandoned. I figured that was like a you're having trouble connecting for too long? Try again, but maybe that's not quite what they meant. Uh, let's just play the Desert of the True here. Ah oh, man, I love the arena interface. It's just so fast, like the F6ing for free. Just straight up value. So it's possible my opponent's got counter magic up here. For the Legion finds what for us? I think I'd rather play Marvin Fane first. Then we can play Forerunner, and then when we get a token from Marvin Fane, assuming it survives, we can like buff him up. Which may mean he'll survive combat. Ooh. That was a kind of fun combination, like, enter the battlefield, animation, and the end turn. Ooh, Sun Scourge champion. See, like, this will be nice, because now we can just swing past that. We have drawn a few more lands than I would like. Sun Scourge champion's a little bit concerning. It's a good card, certainly. Uh... I guess Forerunner's kind of nice, because it'll definitely find us a, a play off the top. Yeah, let's, let's go find a Vampire. Uh, Twilight Prophet's probably most exciting. Bishop of Binding definitely wouldn't be bad. Okay, yeah, those are our options. Also, Legion's Lieutenant. Let's take Twilight Prophet. Okay. And get an attack. And should get a trigger. Uh, target that one. So Martin Payne will get him for three. We got our free vampire along the way. So there's a little bit of a question on whether we play Twilight Priestess, Twilight Prophet, or Bona next turn. Might depend on what my opponent's going for. Probably just best to play Vona. Ooh, is the Anointed? Yeah, my opponent's going deep on this, like, Evolve Eternalized deck, which seems pretty sweet. Uh, we could double block. Eh, I don't really care that much. The blocks. Especially because the former could potentially pump up Marvin and get in again, or Mavern. It's not Marvin. Mavern. Mavern. Much fancier sounding. Hey, look, Twilight Prophet, just like we expected. Yeah, I guess let's play Vona. Vona's pretty good. Well, so far our, our knight's deck is... Ooh, that's a fun animation. I've actually never played her before. Uh, seems pretty cool. Yeah, let's get in with the Forerunner, I guess. Well, I guess we're actually more likely to block with the Forerunner. So I guess let's buff up Mavern. My opponent's tapped out. Oh, I guess we could have gotten in with both. Yeah, that's a good point. But we can still buff up Mavern, and then that discourages blocking, especially since the, the draw is a powerful thing. Alright, so we could if near Deadland something. That doesn't seem to do too much. My opponent can't answer Vona, though. They're going to be in trouble. Okay. Fine play, fine play. Okay, let's play our Twilight Prophet. Another land's not exciting there. Memorial to Folly doesn't fare super well against Ixalan's Binding. That's alright. Definitely have the, uh, the City's Blessing here. Yeah, let's buff up the Forerunner, attack with the Forerunner, make the Forerunner a little bit bigger, and we'll trade for the Vizier of the Anointed if they want to double block. Okay, looks like they do. So yeah, put the Vizier on top. Oh, oh good. I thought the animation went to Sunscourge Champion there for a second, but we did not get blown out. Alright. Don't kill Twilight Prophet. Cool. So this just starts, like, doming our opponent. 
Archangel Sanctions, pretty nice. Okay, so Glyph Keeper's still annoying, though. Hmm. We play Angel of Sanctions. We could target the Glyph Keeper. That doesn't do too much. We could just sit on Twilight Prophet and wait to win. It's likely my opponent doesn't have a removal spell in their hand. Otherwise, I think they probably would have used it immediately. They do have an Anointed Priest. Which is gonna gain them life, so they're not they're not actually dead in like four-ish draws from us. Uh, we could Memorial Folly, just return the Forerunner, replay Forerunner, and then swing with like Mavern Fan. Or even just a token, actually. Could do that. I think that that should be our best play. I wish we could get rid of our Glyph Keeper, but we just don't have anything that works great with it right now. Okay, so let's sacrifice this and return our Forerunner. Maybe? Targets. Okay, we're gonna target that guy. Done. And that guy? Uh, this might be a bug. Submit. Uh oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so a little bit of awkwardness trying to figure that out, but that's okay. Take action. Let's go get Bishop of Binding. Nah, Legions of Ten seems pretty good, actually. Done. And no, oh wait, no good attackers, right? Nah, that's all right. All right, so we took a long time with that turn, but that's okay. Didn't actually end up going to time. We do have a couple of timeouts built up because we played pretty quickly outside of that one turn. But yeah, my opponent's got a real annoying threat in the face of Twilight Prophet. That's interesting. Okay, we're going to be happy to get that with Angel of Sanctions for sure. Another Sunscourge Champion to gain a little bit more life. Looks like they're close to out of stuff. Okay, burns my opponent for two. Call the Cavalry as well. So yeah, let's play... Well... Let's play Shafet Dunes first and tap it for colorless so we don't take any free damage. Not that's real likely to matter. Yeah, that leaves two behind. So Angel of Sanctions enters, removes Twilight Prophet, and then we cast Legion's Lieutenant. And. I guess we target one of our random vampires, and we're going to swing with a random vampire. Okay, that's that's enough for my opponent. Okay, well, we're one and one. I am super, super bitter about that one loss, but that's all right. It's okay. We're still going to go all the way. Just hard mode. Just hard mode, right? Uh, that felt reasonable. It wasn't exactly very nighty, but that's okay. Express yourself to your opponent with emotes by clicking on your avatar. Really, that says troll your opponent with emotes as often as possible. Ooh, whoa. Some of these animations are struggling a little bit. It is the first day it's out. Like, they haven't fixed any bugs at all from a lot of these changes. We can say hello. Oh, well, nope. In that case, I'm Mulligan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's keep that the struggle. I don't think I've ever had this many problems actually with uh with arena. That was just like poorly timed, I guess. <laughs> and I pulled like, Port Mulligan down to six too. I have no idea what our original hand would have looked like, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Alright. Well, we actually have a, a quite good bowl to six, so I don't think we're we're burned too badly. Probably gonna start off with like Knights of Malice. Legion's Lieutenant just is lower impact at this point. Ooh, Grixis with an opt. Reasonable play, reasonable play. Hopefully, usually Grixis means a little bit more like of a controlling deck, so it's possible we can get in kind of underneath my opponent's skin pretty quick. Hexproof from white obviously doesn't do very much right now, but it's alright. Kind of cool. 
I think this uh, hexproof actually is like specifically white now. Okay, a braid solid. A nice clean answer to a good card. Uh, yeah, we'll play Memorial of Folly here. We do have Ravenous Chupacabra coming down the tubes, so if my opponent plays like a reasonable spell next turn, we're happy to kill it. <laughs> yeah, so took a free mulligan and pitched a free game. No tilt, no tilt. <laughs> right, search for Escanta with a kind of fun animation there. Uh, I think we're just going to play Legion's Lieutenant, get in for a point, an extra point of damage. It seems okay. See, it's kind of a buff to the Knight of Malice, too. Kind of. Opponent's going to get some pretty good value off this Surge. Did not choose to put in the Graveyard, so they might be looking for lands. Come on, play a regular spell. Torment of Scarabs. Oh, man. Okay, well, three life is three life. Okay, that's a sweet card for sure. I actually haven't seen uh, this deck in particular in Arena, but I've played against it a couple of times just for fun on Magic Online, and it's cool. You just play a whole bunch of the different Torment cards and try and get your opponent. Uh, it's a little bit hard to say which side of this we want, but I guess we want Knight, because that was the intent in Legion's... Lieutenant does count as a Knight. Now, that hits pretty hard. My phone's down to 10. We can get back Knight of Malice and play it next turn, or we can Chupacabra. So I think we are on the the upside here. One didn't have anything. That probably means that they've got like a removal spell. Skull Duggery might be helpful. It might help the creature survive. Although we ha my opponent would have to have a creature, wouldn't they? All right. Well, let's go to combat. And swing. Because I think my opponent probably has something here. No. Did that do damage? You're at 10, right? I'm so confused by what's going on these days. End turn. Okay, well, let's play our Deadlands. Maybe? What the heck? Did I miss something? I didn't play a land. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. It was just bugged end turn. Oh, okay. There we go. That would have been unfortunate. This is funny. Like, this is way more bugs than I'd seen. Then that malice. Oh, we actually took a free point of damage there. That was bad. Oh, well. Not super careful with tapping our lands. Hopefully it's not going to matter. We do have... Uh, probably three lethal threats and a couple of kill spells. I don't have to have something pretty good. Okay, Hour of Devastation would have wrecked us for sure. But cool. Two and one. Already working our way towards that, uh, that sweet seven and one. Does that give it to us? I guess not immediately. Okay. Cool. Up to 300 gold already. Okay. Shall I? Obviously sweet. Yeah, this uh, deck animation leaves a little bit to be desired. Don't think it's our graphic settings. I think it's just because everything else looks very pretty. Okay, didn't mulligan on accident. Ah, uh, what do I think of this hand? I think it's good enough to not mulligan. That's what I think of this hand. Couple of removal spells. Foul Orchard, uh-oh. If we're playing the Explore deck, that may be tough. The Explore deck is pretty good. Okay, well, let's start off with the Swamp, I suppose. Give my opponent the, the least amount of information possible. And actually, I guess we really want to have a Swamp in case we need to walk the plank, which if they play a... Uh... Oh, no, Dusk Legion's out, it's fine. That's fine. Say they play a Wild Growth Walker, we need to kill it ASAP. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where we want to draw some lands... We have Legion's Lieutenant and Call the Cavalry with Radiant Destiny in the middle. It's actually a pretty fast clock. Add white. Ah, little does my opponent know, we're only kind of a vampire deck. The true power comes from the night within. It sounded kind of dark, didn't it? Nest of Scarabs. Alright. Yeah, we got some cool decks going on. 
History of Banalia. Oh, so close to so good. It's okay. It'll, it'll be good later on, too. Yeah, I don't think there's any real reason to not just slam the Radiant Destiny here. We're still taking a little bit of extra damage, but that's alright. And we want to have Knight. Which is surprising. Oh, I guess that kind of means the gig is up for my opponent. They may not even look at it, they might just assume it's Vampire. Okay, next turn, land. Any land, I'm happy. They may kill my Legion's Lieutenant. They have like Torment of Scarabs. So that card is right. Tor no, Torment of Venom. I think is the card. Yeah, it's fine. Looks like they are trying to play like a Vizier of Poison sort of deck, if I had to guess though. Which is cool. On Rikudu, alright. So I hope it's a 1-1 one, one Insect. And a 2-3. No, oh, I guess a 3-4. Nice. We drew a land, so that's great. Uh, don't have a good attack here, obviously, but we will play the Call of Cavalry. And start building out our deck. Still taking some damage from these Shafet Dunes, but that's alright. No attackers. And we're sitting on two like good removal spells now. One more land, we can find Liliana, which will be great. We've got History of Benalia that eventually will start helping us out. My opponent is going to make a whole lot of tokens, which I guess kind of wrecks the history, since they're just going to have loads and loads of chump blockers. Sonry Kudu is actually a little bit annoying. It's going to very, very effectively wall us up here. Just as like a 3-4 for 3. Oh yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, double block? Nah, they probably have like Torment. Nah, we'll just take it. Three damage isn't nothing, but it's not massive either. And like I said, they have Torment and Venom there and they'll like kill something in response. Pretty bad. We could have triple blocked, I guess. Nothing. Yeah, they got a removal spell for sure. Uh, it doesn't change anything, right? You know, let's just go to attacks. Knight of Grace is going to be pretty good. It's going to be a 4 3 for Striker. My opponent plays something we can cast out. I guess we could do that at instant speed. Okay. That's fine. Weird. Okay, well, we're just going to play Knight of Grace. Add white. They've got something for sure. Splendid Agony. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess that, that makes sense. And I actually like some two Scarrows. Okay, Splendid Agony sounds pretty good. Uh, do we walk the Plank the, on the Kudu? I actually really don't hate that. Even though the Knight of Grace is so effective against the Kudu, this helps us get in damage pretty quickly. We have Cast Out still if we need to remove something. I think this is okay. No, I'm pretty sure there was an, an like an animation or something there, but that's alright. Hopefully you guys aren't getting tired of that incessant frog croaking. Hopefully me telling you that there's an incessant frog croaking doesn't make you tired of the incessant frog croaking. But yeah, they're in kind of a tough spot. Like, they can triple block a knight. They've been stuck a little bit on land, so have we, but... It's funny, I, neither of us mulligan, but I feel like we both had kind of awkward hands. Okay, well, Tension of the Glorified is not our favorite draw. Uh, let's go to combat. Swing with everything. I guess if we can, well, no. I was gonna say if we were gonna play cast out, we could hit the city's blessing and keep the Knight of Grace vigilant. But I don't know if that really matters that much either. Okay, they're just chump blocking all around. Interesting. Why not chump block the Knight of Grace? They have a. Oh, it's, it's, well, it's not protection for black, it's just hexproof for black. Maybe they don't realize that. Okay, so the first strike damage is, oh, wait. I think we just skipped through our turn again. No, we didn't, because the first strike thing's bugged. That's right. That's going to confuse me a lot. Uh, yeah, I think we played the Desert of the Glorified. We really would want white, but I think hitting Liliana next turn is going to be pretty nice. So, I don't want to risk not drawing more lands. And it's possible that we can just get to the point where my opponent's close to dead off cast out anyway here. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, I guess I still feel like you block one of the scarabs on Knight of Grace. 
My opponent's not doing terribly. I mean, they've got five cards in hand. We have a, a good board state, but not an absurd one. If they just pass here, would we try and cast out? Cast out the Dusk Legion Zealot? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, can't do too much about that, I guess. I wonder if we should have gotten rid of the Nest of Scarabs. Definitely could. I wonder if that had been better earlier. Uh, I think having cast out just as an answer to something annoying is not bad. Interesting. Yeah, we'll take one. I guess my opponent's just saying they're not going to block. Well, I guess they think they can't block because they think this card's got protection. It's close to that. Ooh, Call the Cavalry is kind of interesting. It might actually be better than Liliana. It's less mana efficient, definitely, but it's also bigger bodies. Let's go to attacks. Don't think there's anything that's going to happen here, but... Oh, yeah. Weird. Yeah, first strike damage is kind of wonky. Oh, the cavalry seems pretty strong. That gives us three lethal attackers next turn. And then cast out to clear the way still. You have to have something fairly good. Because they either need to, like, play a blocker and a kill spell, and even then we still got him. Okay, cool. Three and one. We always get an excellent view of Joyra. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yep. Cool. All right. One more before we break even. And we actually haven't lost even for real yet, so feeling good. I don't know if our deck is that fantastic, but as always in our arena, there's a lot of players that are kind of getting their bearings a little bit, and a lot of people that are trying out fun new decks. Like, I've seen, like, mono red legit close to standard playable decks here, and I don't think our deck would stand up very well against them. But they're not super common either. Okay, this hand actually looks pretty good. It's a little bit land light, but two Knights of Grace are good. Or Knight of Great and Knight of Malice opposing cards. And then we've got things like the uh, Marburn Fane. Like, we've got... This is a good hand. I'm probably over-talking that. It's just a good hand. Okay, let's start with Memorial Folly. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh. Hey, this might be the mono red deck we've we've spoken about. Okay. So with that in mind, we want to keep from taking damage as much as possible. Uh, let's play the Knight of Malice. It's probably gonna get shot here. Don't think it's real likely my opponents. I'm like I'm not sure if they'd be playing red or black. I guess black's actually probably a little bit more likely if they're on the beatdown. So Knight of Malice is actually probably a little bit worse as well. So if they're going to, like, abrade something, maybe I'd rather it be that than Knight of Grace. Yeah, fair enough. Not surprising. Okay, another land. We could play Mavern Fane just because it's so good if it gets in there. If we find another land next turn, that'd be great because we can kill whatever they play to block Mavern Fane. If we don't find another land, we're kind of in trouble. We could play Knight of Grace. That's the most conservative line. Although, if it's going to get killed, I'd rather it be Mavern Fane because it's a little bit more mana efficient. Yeah, I think we're going to go for this. That might be... Eh. Hmm. That might be a little bit optimistic, but I have faith. I'm feeling lucky. And I'm also feeling fairly likely like this card's just going to die, but... We'll see. I think it's like an on-crop crasher as well. Okay, hey, there you go. Speak of the devil. Okay, and if that's the case, we're much happier having played Mavern Fane. Okay, they even exerted, which is nice, because I don't think I would have blocked. Okay, so this turn will play Forsaken Sanctuary. We get in with Mavern Fane, but then we have a 1-1 one, one back, which is great. Uh, Knight of Grace is a, definitely a better blocker, although the Oncron Crasher is not coming in anyway right now. And again, being mana efficient actually seems kind of important. So if we get four runner, what what vampire are we going to get? I guess if we get four runner, we could go and get um, the lord whose name's escaping me for a moment, and then we could play both next turn. That seems pretty good. And we get buffs. Yeah, this might be our way back into the game. So let's take the action. Legion Lieutenant. That's it. Pilot Prophets may be good. They didn't kill Mavern Fane. Nah, I think it's like Legion Lieutenant. Okay, 
So we're at 11. We're not doing fantastically. Hazret's good, but Bishop of Binding actually wrecks it fairly well, quote-unquote. Fairly well. Okay, another on-crop crasher. We would happily trade this away if my opponent gives us that opportunity. Okay. Yeah, we will go ahead and block. Well, do we actually want to? We're going to play a 2-2 next turn. It's going to swing for two back. That's a one for... Well, I guess we're taking one. We're gaining two then. So yeah, let's, let's not block. Okay. Down to seven. Play Legion Lieutenant. Um, buff up that little vampire. Go to combat. We're not going to block with Navern Pain ever. I think we'll probably block with Forerunner of the Legion, though. So let's swing with both of these guys. Go back up to ten. Oh yeah, even better. All the triggers. Navern Pain Legion, or Forerunner of the Legion is a great wombo. Play Knight of Grace. Yeah, I think we're stabilizing. I don't think it's likely my opponent plays like Hour of Devastation or anything, so... And we have two reasonable removal spells in hand. Hazard's still dangerous. Okay, yeah, cool. We beat the, the Boogeyman. That Light Flank actually helps a lot. It never had like a Rampaging Ferocidon. Or Ferocidon? Ferocidon? Can't remember. Anyway, alright, so we've hit the bare minimum to break even. Is that sweet? Let's see if we can't take another... Or wait. We just won three or four. No, I can't remember. Oh, we've won four. So yeah, if we can win another three matches, let's get her gun. Yeah, I'm not loving this. I feel like it was, like, good for a couple of times, and ever since it's just been super laggy. Gonna be very careful not to click down there at all. Poof. Now, hmm. Against some draws, this is gonna be pretty good. I assume we're getting paired based on match records. So this might just be too slow. When it goes first... We have lands, we have spells. I think I'm going to keep... We could just get run over. My opponent does play like... Something like Mono Red or something. That's going to be bad. Looks like my opponent's just starting off the Foul Orchard though, which is not bad for us. I guess we'll play Swamp since we do have a Walk the Plank. On the off chance that we need like Swamp and then Walk the Plank or something. Drover the Mighty. Interesting. Ooh! Argyle. That's well, the first time we've seen her in action. It's another 4 drop. We do have a lot of four drops in this deck. Hopefully we don't get like torn apart by some crazy dino synergies here. It's possible we take a lot of damage. But black green is definitely a little bit less dinosaur -y than some. Okay, so we take three. Thrashing Brawn on Hurts. Knight of Grace isn't terrible, although my opponent doesn't have a black permanent. We can play Arguel next turn if we draw a land, although we actually haven't found another land yet. Eh, we're taking a lot of damage. This was a, a suspect hand, so I can't complain too much if it doesn't work out for us. But yeah, I see no reason my opponent wouldn't just swing here. We're definitely not going to block. This has the merit that my opponents may be playing black primarily for removal, in which case the Knight of Grace might be hard for them to deal with. Okay, well... Not a land, but Knight of Malice is a not horrendous card. If they can't answer either of these, we all of a sudden have a reasonable blocking defense. And we do have powerful cards, like we can take over if the game goes crazy late. Ooh, Island. Yeah, this is not what you think of for a, a dino deck, but my opponent's playing some sweet stuff over there. Definitely curved out nicely. Oh no. That's really bad. Yeah, I think this might be our first legitimate loss here. Okay, so we take three. Okay, Deadlands was good. What do we play? Probably Bishop of Binding. We have to hope they don't have removal, but if we get rid of the Hostage Taker, they can't take the Knight of Malice, and that might be the first step towards a glorious stabilization. Hostage Taker's a good one. They may just be splashing for that, honestly. I don't even think that would be incorrect. Uh, yeah, not gonna attack. We are on the defense here. And with Ariel and a billion Call of Cavalry in hand, I think we can take over the game if it goes 
long, even if my opponent is playing some, like, ramp shenanigans. Alright. Fair enough. Rask's Contempt was a solid answer there, certainly. Uh, we could... Ixalan's Binding? Oh, okay. They're just feeling aggressive. Yeah, I mean, we'll kill the Drover. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Like, it ran into a Lance. Okay. So, my opponent doesn't quite have lethal here. Uh, I do think Ariel is definitely the play. Not gonna attack. Ah, it's a shame that this is the first time we've really seen our, like, I don't know, patron card, and it's not in the best of matchups here. My opponent's drawn exceptionally well. They haven't hit too many lands. They haven't had land problems either. Yeah, they got a removal spell here. It's over, which is looking not unlikely. But that means that we can make the, the greediest possible blocks. If they have, like, buff, they have literally anything. Okay, that's not bad. Um, so we can play Call the Cavalry and Chump. That's what it calls for. Okay. Um, no attacks. This, this game is realistically over, but no real point in throwing it in either. We do have things like Walk the Plank, which could be potentially pretty good eventually. Okay, just kill those guys in order. And my opponent, if they run out of like action, Night of Grace still does block fairly well. They've had a, a good start though, and we did just give them a land, which they may have been lacking. Well, it doesn't seem like they've been super hindered. It's annoying the Dusk Legion Zealot is actually another lethal thread, but... Oh no, yeah, I think that's probably it then. Yeah, and another Jay Light Ranger off the top. Well, this is not what I would have expected from a, a green-white deck, but it seems good. And I think that is it for us. Oh, it's game, I think. There we go. Concede. Alright. Well, a little bit tragic, but that's okay. We kept a kind of questionable hand, didn't quite get there. It's the way of the world. Alright, can we go three wins before our next loss? I have faith. I don't know. Not sure why that's like such a stutter, but hopefully it's not just this computer. Uh, no, no, don't want to do that. Not, not playing around with potential mulligans. Yeah, our opening hand looks good. I mean, we don't have history of Benalia, but we have like four of the Legion. If we find lands, we can play history of Benalia. If we find like white, we go history of Benalia into call the cavalry, and this game could be over really fast. Okay, now we'll say hello. I've been forgetting to say hello, and I should do that regularly. Vicious Conquistador. Not great. Not terrible. Does mean my opponent's almost certainly fairly aggressive, and almost certainly vampires. So I think we're going to be a slightly slower, maybe more controlling for variety of the deck, but... Yep. Fine. Ooh, Vicious Offering. So that's interesting. I'd really like to play, be able to play Forerunner next turn. So I guess we're going to play Desert of the Glorified, even though it would be nice to just kill this card. Yeah. Although, yeah, we want to be able to play Forerunner because it's a blocker. What if we draw a land? Hmm. If we skip next turn, we're not doing Forerunner, but if we don't want to buff with the Forerunner anyway... Yeah, I, I think that's still correct, though. Let's just play the Desert. So definitely a little bit of a slow start, but I think our hand is pretty loaded. So assuming we don't just get run over pretty quick, this game will go well. Okay, four on the Legion. Good, not absurd. That'll get Vicious Offering for sure. Don't really want to give my opponent random tokens. Ooh, he's chaining them, huh? That's cool. Okay, Radiant Destiny. Okay, so let's play our Forerunner. 
And we're not going to get anything. We just need that land. So there's definitely an argument to not trading here, because they're going to bump up the Conquistador, and I think swing with both. If we don't, we can use Skullduggery plus Vicious Offering next turn if we don't find anything else. There's a Legion's Lieutenant. So we want to save the Vicious Offering for that, probably. Do we just block? I think we're really hoping to find, like, Call the Cavalry. Yeah, I think we block. That's also, like, an extra token, like, upside that they'd be able to get. Okay, missed on the lands again, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we're casting Vicious Offering probably next turn. Yeah, I don't know. Keeping the Forerunner up now would have looked a lot better, but... It is the way of the world. Okay. Yeah, we're taking a lot of damage here. One going to combat. We are just killing a Legion Lieutenant. Yep. Uh, regular old. Okay. There we go. So that means we take slightly less. We're still not looking healthy. And here's a walk the plank. Really getting punished for not holding onto the Forerunner, but it's hard to know, too. Uh, I think we're just going to use it. And, like, Radiant Destiny or playing something like that just doesn't do anything. And we need to not take damage. Yeah, I, I swear there's supposed to be, a, like, an audio... <laughs> Audio animation is the wrong word. Audio effect, I guess, there. Okay, Dusk Legion Zealot. It's a good card for my opponent, but not necessarily, like, a brutal one, either. <laughs> oh, the tragedy. Okay, well, it's a land. That is better than not a land. I am going to cast down, I think... Might as well do that before combat. I guess my opponent might play something like Anointed Deacon. Sure. And it should prompt us to give us an opportunity to do something before my opponent attacks, at least. Yeah, so we're just going to cast down. So we're using a lot of premier removal on kind of bad stuff, but we do need to stay alive. Part 5? We can, we can get there. This isn't over. No play. Uh, Twilight Prophet's likely to die. I think if my opponent doesn't have lands, it doesn't have spells, that means they have loads of removal. So Call the Cavalry seems this like our best option. This is more resistant than Twilight Prophet is to removal. I'll bet my opponent's just got things like cast out in hand. Here, that are like six drops, I guess. We are out of removal. Outside of Vona, which is... Not necessarily uh, going to survive for a turn. And we can't can't actually pay 7 life either. Okay. Noisy Deacon's good. Um, we're not getting destroyed here, though, either. I definitely block. So we could just Ixalan's Binding. Uh... Yeah, if we play Twilight Prophet, they get the opportunity to just trade with Twilight or um, with Anointed Deacon. And actually making sure they can't play more Anointed Deacons actually seems not bad. This is a little bit skeptical, or a little bit suspect maybe. I'm a little bit skeptical, but... Just because we're really like hemorrhaging all of our removal. Okay, binding on our binding, fair enough. That at least was a good tempo play for us, then. Yeah, doesn't do anything. Nice. Another Call of Cavalry is exactly what the Doctor ordered. You can also Radiant Destiny plus, like, Skullduggery, because that would make it a 4-4 four, four against my opponents. 4-3... no. 4-2. Doesn't do enough, does it? Call of Cavalry it is. Uh, no attacks. So we kind of stabilized. We're pretty precarious here. Like, a lot of things could kill us. But if their plan is just to play things like a Murder of Dusk and try and kill us with them, 
we maybe we maybe can get there. Yep. I will trade two knights for the anointed deacon for sure. I mean, it's not her jump block. Okay, doesn't even buff. There's a radiant destiny. Guess we play that. That does actually put kind of a clock on our opponent. Uh, let's do knight. And sure, let's swing. I mean, they're vigilant, which is awfully nice. We have a skullduggery. And all of a sudden, my opponent's not looking crazy healthy. We still lose to a lot here, though. The vigilance there is huge upside, though. Okay, no to deacon. Yeah, I mean, go for it. Yeah, they are getting in with both. Uh, let's go to blocks. Let's see if they have any shenanigans. Do you think we'd use Skullduggery? Nah, I don't care. Two blocks. Damage. Okay. And combat. My opponent might have a way to kill off this other knight, which is not great, not terrible for us. Being carefully how they tap their mana here, that's probably not good for us. Evern Fane. Okay. Interesting that they didn't play that before combat. That really makes me think they've got a trick, but how else would we have blocked there? Cleansing Ray. Okay. Um, so I guess we will Skullduggery to keep our knight alive then. So, creature we control, creature and opponent controls. That'll, the Radiant Destiny going away would have meant that my knight has taken lethal, but that actually just barely will keep it above the, the edge of death here, so. That's an interesting main deck card. I mean, it was good here, or at least fine here, but... Another land I don't hate. We actually play History of Benalia. Kind of feel like Bona might just be better, though. Let's attack with both. Okay, nice. I like that. Wants to six. Play Shafet Dunes. Do I guess if we play Twilight Prophet, there's a chance we just like kill my opponent next turn. I guess these are both good if we untap, right? Because Twilight Prophet's actually probably a little bit better if we untap the. Let's tap this for colorless. Leave a little bit of doubt in my opponent's mind. It's kind of funny. It still used the Franction for Sanction Sanctuary. Have to be careful when you've got these activated ability lands because it likes to tap those very last. They have removal. We're still not doing terrible. Okay, yep. Fair enough. Yeah, that's so awkwardly quiet. No play. We're gonna try and play Bona this turn. Let's go ahead and make an attack first. Yeah, I think there's a reasonable chance we win this game now. We had kind of a rough run of it, but I th think there's a good shot. We don't have any removal, so if my opponent plays like a must-answer threat, we're still kind of in trouble. But we do have Radiant... Well, I guess Radiant Destiny isn't quite lethal, is it? Yeah, mostly we've just got good stuff on on the battlefield. So we can get rid of Vona. It looks like they were just like loaded with removal. Okay, and Moment of Craving. Okay, well History of Benalia is going to look good here. I guess we can't play that and Legion Lieutenant, though. I wonder if we're better off to play Legion Lieutenant plus Radiant Destiny instead. Uh, I kind of like getting the mm, history down, actually. Yeah, and then that next turn, it's three anyway. Okay, we have to take a point of damage. Ooh. That's cool. The Saga effect. Oh, man, look at that Knight token. I haven't seen that before. That is beautiful. Crazy. Uh-oh. Champion of Dusk is good. Okay. Ooh, Liliana's good, too. So we can Liliana and just get back something? Do we like anything here? Not really. I mean, we can get back a... 
Twilight Prophet, but that just doesn't block incredibly well. Uh, yeah, let's play Liliana and just make a zombie. That seems good. Gosh darn it. I'm gonna tap both of those first. There we go. That was kind of ominous, Liliana. Uh, no attacks. Next turn, our knights become lethal on their own. Baffling and getting rid of, I guess, one of the knights. Definitely would recommend doing that before history surges to life. But that does mean my opponent's going to have to trade their Champion of Dusk away for a knight this next turn. And then we will have Radiant Destiny. I wonder if we want to use a zombie, honestly. It's a little bit interesting. Very much dependent on if Liliana lives, which... Oh yeah, I guess we have to double block. That's true. <laughs> I was thinking such grand thoughts. Fair enough. It could... No! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just threw it away. I had lethal. I even talked about having lethal. Oh, that's kind of a weird effect there. Oh, <laughs> I had lethal. No, what did I do? Oh. Okay. Well, I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at this game. Uh, do we want to bring back anything? We can bring back Twilight Prophet. With, actually, that seems pretty good with Call of Cavalry and Legion's Lieutenant coming down. I wonder if my opponent has the Drain 3. Probably not, right? No one plays that card. Right? <laughs> I'm going to cry if they do. They've been sitting on a card for a long time. Okay. Let's bring back Twilight Prophet. And now my opponent should be super dead. Oh man, I can't believe we missed lethal. I'm gonna be so sad if we lose this game. Okay, Legion Lieutenant. Good, not great. We are just gonna jump it this time. If it comes in. Yeah, definitely jumping. Okay, that was the last card, I guess. Well, I guess we should just get rid of one of these, right? That since the Legion's Lieutenant does have some situational upside, it is a knight after all. Okay, luck. Okay, so Twilight Prophet's gonna do some... No, no, no free damage. It's okay. Uh, we Radiant Destiny, though, and have Lethal, right? Because we just choose Vampire. Vampire. Yeah, and that's true. We shouldn't have blocked the Legion Lieutenant either. Oh man, we're being sloppy. We could have lost this game in a lot of ways. But we got there. We got there, guys. Woohoo! Tight one. Yeah, that was. I definitely, uh, we would have deserved the loss, I think. Hey, cool. Free Dominaria pack. We're definitely gonna open up our last couple of packs here at the end, too. Okay, five out of seven. Ooh, only two more. Only two more. We got this. Playing against Blub here, which is uh, not very flattering, but kind of entertaining when you look at my opponent's avatar's face. I could see him saying Blub. I always want to say hello while I'm just waiting here, but don't want to get punished. Okay, this is pretty cool. So we've got Joss or Josu Vest for the first time. Citizen Sky Marcher on three with four runner, runner of the Legion. I think this is fine. Not the nut or anything. We don't have any two drops, but a good car or a good hand nonetheless. Pulls Mulligan down to five. Oof, that is rough. Looks like they're getting to scry here, though. I wish it was a little bit more obvious if my opponent scries to top or bottom. It's not something that seems to be super well indicated on an arena, at least so far. Okay. Blue. That usually means a slightly slower deck. Oh, okay, Merfolk. Never mind. I take it all back. Okay, so this Sky Marcher should be pretty good against Merfolk. Deep Root Waters. Oh, that is rough when you've mulliganed. Yeah, that is absolutely not what my opponent was hoping to see. Let's play the Sky Marcher and reveal a vampire. 
I guess just like Forerunner. Don't really want to show off the Bishop of Binding, so. Yeah, when you're... This card is, like, arguably good if you're playing straight Merfolk and you have, like, a fine draw, because then you drop a bunch of Merfolk and, you know, you get a couple extra 1-1s. One but it is tough. Br Branch Walker's good. It might help them draw, like, a land. Mistbinder's powerful. Obviously, Walk the Plank is just straight up dead in this matchup. We're going to save Chupacabra to kill the Mistbinder. Uh, this turn... I think I'm just going to play Jasu Vess. Yeah, seems fine. Let's go to combat and swing. Ooh, do they have, like, unsummon? Oh, alright. Fair enough. Um, no, no blockers, no damage, no nothing. Uh, let's play Josie Bess anyway here. Oh, no, no kicker, just regular old. Since we can't actually pay the character cost. Card's cool. I So you all have to let me know if you guys are lore buffs out there. Bess is Liliana's last name, right? This isn't like Liliana's dead brother, is it? Maybe? It seems possible to me. Okay, yeah, they're, they're spreading wide here, spreading wide. Ooh, I like History of Benalia as much as the next guy. Uh, let's just make it enter the tapped. This isn't Vigilance, right? Yeah, Menace. So let's play our Ravenous Chupacabra, and we're just going to eat the Mistbinder, I think. That was a creepy noise from the Chupacabra. We could swing and pressure my opponent. I feel like we don't need to, though. I don't want to open myself to, like... Well, I don't know. I guess we're on the upper hand. History of Benalia is going to be great. Yeah, maybe we can kill our opponent with, like, History of Benalia. Sure. Let's get in with Mr. Bess. The Chupacabra trades with the Branch Walker unless they've got something. And if they'd want to trade their whole board away there, I'm pretty okay. Okay, so we've got History of Benalia plus Sky Merger now, I think. Uh, let's go to Attacks. Do we want to swing with both? Nah, I think we should leave the Chupacabra back. Well, Chupacabra might mean a trade. Well, our life total is super healthy. Let's just be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Uh-oh. This going to be the 3-3 flash. Okay, that's pretty good. That's a reason not to turn the Chupacabra in. Yeah, I, I admit I did not think about that. Oh yeah, okay. So there you see, Hexproof's like switching colors. Okay. Opponent is like crazy multi-blocking Bess, which is good. Okay, and getting value off the Swift Warden. That was awkward for sure, but it's alright. I think, thanks to my opponent's mulligan, it's still going to work out pretty well. Yep. Do -do 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 -do. That's weird. They used to have a sweet animation that would like bounce in between the cards when I was killing them, but I guess maybe that's a uh, bit the dust. Okay, yeah, let's play our Sky Marcher. Don't want to take free damage from History of Benalia. Reveal the Forerunner. And play History. That's such a cool, like, art. It like breaks away into I don't know. I guess just burns probably is what they're going for. So we're happy to take some damage from this Swift Warden here. We still have Bishop of Binding and Walk. Well, no, Walk Plane doesn't do anything. Almost certainly. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Tempest Caller. Okay. Oh, I can get in for some damage here. Ooh, Tetsamok's good. So this gave Hexproof initially, but not anymore, right? So you could Bishop of Binding plus activate Tetsamok twice. Seems good. I don't know if my opponent's going to have anything for the Bishop. So let's reveal. Choose that. I guess we can only do it once, because these are Hexproof. And then Bishop of Binding.
And go to combat, swing with our Sky Marcher. And that's it. We're gonna have a potentially pretty high amount of damage this next turn. Yeah, Deep Root Elite, a very, very good card. If you can play it like your opening hand, but not super exceptional here. Okay. And we're gonna play Liliana, I'm pretty sure, here. So we can Bishop of Bunny make it a 4 4. We give my opponent back Swift Warden, but trade like two creatures. That doesn't seem great. Yeah, so let's just swing with our fatties here. These knights are definitely getting in there in their hour of glory. You know the worst part about playing Texamok in Arena? It always slows down the game. Our deck has been very kind to us. We really haven't had to mulligan or, like, despite the, the one free loss, we've been pretty lucky. If they're chump blocking, I would think it's a multi-block, but maybe not. They're maybe just assuming that, like, four damage is about as bad as it's going to get, which is possible. If you're playing things like Merf Merfolk Mistbinder, though, I kind of feel like you're admitting defeat if you're doing that. Hey, Liliana. Can we get back anything of note? Ooh, Chupacabra. It's kind of like zombies still, though. I don't want my opponent to play, like, another Tempest Caller and kill Liliana. I belong to no one. And right now, it doesn't actually... Like, we don't have anything truly devastating to kill. Yeah, I think my opponent's just gonna start drowning under kind of raw power over there, though. Yeah. It was tough. I mean, they mulligan to five is a tough game to win. And even with the, the free advantage from the, the attack into the flash creature, it worked out. All right, one more, one more. It all comes down to this, guys. All comes down to this. Karn looks like... I don't know, it's not even anguish, it's just kind of like, why me? It looks like an insolent, like, kid. He's just like, Mom! I don't want my temporal to be sundered. Ooh! Oh, cool. This is actually lagging again a little bit, it's kind of weird. Just for a second there. This is a new map, though. I guess this is Dominaria. Something about that Carter animation just... does not seem happy. Alright, uh, this hand's pretty good. We've got Knight of Grace. I guess we have two tap lands, which is a little bit awkward, but... I think pretty much any hand that's got, like, an opening with Knight of Grace that we can play feels pretty good. We've even got some reasonable top end, too. Another land's nice there. But the Forsaken Sanctuary. Hmm, the little music seems kind of loud over here. Is that just me? Might just be me. Blue black, and they did not mulligan to oblivion. Ooh, treasure ram. I was gonna say that might mean that we actually might be playing like a, a reasonable counter spell matchup, but treasure map it means that we're gonna get it to at least resolve one knight of grace. Iron catacombs. I love treasure map. It's such a cool card. Like, they just knocked flavor out of the park. It's like the perfect level of power because it's a good card, but not a devastating card. Yeah, it's just sweet. Uh, so we can play Forerunner. It's a little bit less powerful. It's a little more mana efficient. Seems okay. Let's go ahead and swing with our knight. I don't think there's anything we can run into here. Unless they... Yeah. Nothing. Okay. So this might be nice because my opponent's removal is probably centered in black. Okay, we're not actually ending the turn, right? Because that's first strike. Oh, it looks like end to the turn for my opponent, too. Okay. Yeah, that first strike's gonna get me one these times. My opponent was confused. Not that it matters too much. Okay, so yeah. End the turn. Except for it's not really the end. Yep, okay. It scares me every time I do that, though, too. I feel like the music's really loud. I'm gonna turn the music down a little. Maybe I'm paranoid. 
I felt really loud. Yes, we do want to take the action. Uh, Twilight Prophet, probably, right? Iron Fane wouldn't be bad. I think Twilight Prophet's just our power play, though. Yeah. So then my opponent is very much incentivized to keep up, like, a counter spell or a removal for it or something. Okay, cycling hieroglyphic elimination. Yeah, I'll bet they'll like tune the audio a little bit and just turn that down ever so slightly because it didn't feel pretty loud. I don't really want to walk into counter spells. So I think we're actually just playing Night of Grace and Desert of the True. Let's go to combat first, though. I think my opponent has not incorrectly identified that a resolve Twilight Prophet would be probably pretty bad for him. Let's cast Desert of the True. Actually, let's not do that yet. Let's play our Knight first, and then play Desert of the True. Give my opponent as little information as possible. They may just counter this. If they do, that's okay with me. It is potentially a pretty dangerous card for them, too, because the protection or Hexproof from Black might be pretty good. Okay, they allow it to resolve. Their Desert. And pass. So we don't have a like devastating board state or anything like that, but we are ahead on board and against a control deck that's seeking to answer threat after threat. Outside of a board wipe, they're looking like they're kind of far behind. Yeah, that's a board wipe. Ouch. Okay, that does mean that we'll be able to resolve Liliana here though. Ooh. So that's pretty good. I think it's better than Twilight Prophet in a vacuum. My opponent's not gonna be able to pressure it. Unless they got spell beers, I guess. Spell beers would be awkward. No, oh, just treasure map response. That value, though. That value. That card's so cool. I was a little bit worried when Arena was first being announced that they'd have trouble keeping up, like, the visual and audio appeal for, like, 200 fresh new cards. Okay, sensor. Oh, no, I guess that's true. Oh, wrecked. I can't pay the one. That's true. The treasure cove. I didn't even think of that. I am destroyed. Uh, cancel? Oh, okay, because I was pay one. I just... It was funny because it was a counter spell and cancel, and I was confused. So we can still resolve Twilight Prophet. My opponent's a fair bit ahead here, though. Fair bit ahead. Okay. So I think it's very likely my opponent's got the... the pay three... Are we still running into this, though? Yes, we can cycle the Desert of the Glorified. Yeah, I think my opponent... I can't remember what that card is called, either. The one with the Scarab God Scepter, though. Supreme Will. Yep. Alright. So, maybe we shouldn't have walked into that. It's hard, though. Like... The Profane Procession's good. My opponent does have to kill us eventually. Profane Procession is probably not a card that they can really, real easily remove. And I mean, yeah, they're playing things like Scarab Gun. Profane Procession destroys it. Nice. And we actually even drew a land so we can just exile it. Oh no, actually we're one off, aren't we? Okay. Well, let's play Profane Procession. My trump card is better than your trump card? Question mark. Don't get blown up by sensor here. No, negate! No, you're kidding me! No! <laughs> what? What even was that? Oh, I think we lose then. Goodness, Scarab God is a beating. Oh man, losing that Liliana was tough. Ah. Yeah. We got super, super punished by the, the treasure cove. Ugh. Alright. Well, this is the part where I complain about the fact that we could have had one extra loss here, but... Yeah, the lands does not do too much for us. But we had a pretty good run, too. Alright, fair enough. So I think we're pretty much just dead. No reason not to play it. We do have some more exile effects in the deck. Maybe we'd get there. But between that and Twilight Prophet ticking up, 
It's going to be a rough game. They can even scry like lands to the bottom to burn us even a little bit more. Oh man, negate. I was like, oh, we got this. We got this. Yeah. We're going to die pretty quick, aren't we? Yeah. So now my opponent's got two lethal, basically three lethal. That is not going to do it. All right, all right. Concede. So he fell just short of the dream, just short, but that's all right. Still fun, getting to claim prizes will be cool. And we would have gotten, I guess, another 200. And would have gotten, I guess the rare is uncommon, so 200 more gold. Kind of the amount of like getting one quest done. All right, claim prizes. 800, Memorial to Folly I like. Fall of Thran I don't. Ooh, Lyra Dawnbringer, this is a card. Cool. I mean, it does die to like every piece of removal, which is a little bit unfortunate. It's probably a little just better in draft than it is in actual like deck deck uh, constructed, but still cool. I will accept mythics. All right, and I promised you guys I would open up some more packs. Uh, we can buy two more, and then I think after that we'll be, we'll call it a day. But let's see if we can't get some more last minute sweet stuff. Oh man, we're, we're going to get a place at a Memorial of Folly in no time. The Bond, cool card. Not particularly powerful, I don't think, but cool. Oh, Yargle! And a rare wild card. I'm not sure which is more exciting. Wizard's Lightning and Oath of Teferi. Not super exciting about Oath. I guess maybe in like some sort of crazy Super Ren's deck, it's pretty cool. Okay, that's it for today. I have completely spent my uh, Magic Arena winnings. Thanks everybody so much for watching. It was really, really fun to try out kind of a new sweet deck. Yeah, I think it worked pretty well. It was kind of a heap of good cards, maybe not quite as synergistic as it could be. Like ideally, we'd really want a couple more History of Benalia. Uh, we would want to max out our Knight of Malice, Knight of Graces for sure, but the deck was still fun. Had some kind of vampire themes, had some sort of uh, night themes. It felt pretty good. Yeah, even despite that one kind of free loss at the very beginning, which was unfortunate, we ended up going, I guess, six and three. Solid record. Happy with that. Would get us to day two of a Grand Prix. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Definitely, like I said, if you like the videos, subscribe. It means a lot to me. It'll let you find my videos easier in the future. I'll see you guys next time.